Hi everyone, how is it going? It is your pal Sal here and guys we are here today to talk about the Spice Girls and their second studio album, Spice World. I mean that's a W in case, not a three, a W, but um, oh my god, okay. So guys, I, um, I have been living for the past couple of days, so as you all know, my, uh, my first reaction to their first album, Spice, uh, I really like the album, and guys, since I um, listened to it, I have really, really grown to love it. Um, I, I think, I forget which day I did, but basically I'm also in the middle, or the end, the end of my Christina Aguilera journey, so I just, just did Lotus. And that album doesn't really give you a whole lot to go back to. I've listened to it a couple times, don't get me wrong, but um, this compared in Spice, like, I was like, the one that I kept going back to was this one. Um, I have to say, so many of the songs are just absolutely incredible i'm so mad i didn't know them as well but i have really grown to love naked oh my god this is, this is a pop um and then uh <laughs> mama as we all know we talked about that there um last time lover oh my god too like let me just tell you guys the album itself has just been I love it so much and I'm so happy to be continuing on this journey because again as today we're talking about Spice World um and the thing that I think everybody has said in comments is that this is their best album. Spice World is their best album. So let's let's contextualize it for everybody. So this album was released on November 1st, 1997, a little over a year after the first one. Um, I believe um, from what I've read, it seems like the their first album kind of came late to the game in America. Um, so it really didn't, it really wasn't a year for Americans like getting introduced to them and already getting the second album. So, you know, there's that. But um, on the American Billboard 200, this album charted at number three. So that's pretty good. And it spawned four singles, which included Spice Up Your Life, the only one out of here that I know a little bit of, which is went to number 18, Too Much, what, which went to number nine, uh, Stop, which made it to number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100, and the final single, Viva Forever, uh, did not chart. When we get to Viva Forever, I actually want to talk about it a little bit because there's something I want to bring up. And it seems that, you know, in the promotion from this album, I believe it was towards the end of the tour that they did for this, uh, Jerry Halliwell left the group. Um, which, who, as we all know, is Ginger Spice, uh, which is the name that rolls off the off the tongue the least to me. The name, her name, Jerry Howell, me, like it, it means something to me. But like the term Ginger Spice, I never had heard that one before. I heard Scary Spice, you know, Sporty Spice, all that. But um, that, I guess that one didn't stick. I'm from in pop culture. That Ginger Spice. But regardless of that, um, we are here today to listen to this album. Uh, I'm really excited because I've loved their first album. I've heard that this is the, their best album. So I guess we got nothing else to do but get started. So we are be going to begin with track number one, Spice Up Your Life. The chorus of it, I know. I don't really know the rest of the song, but um, here we go. Let's do it. Spice Up Your Life. Some kitchen utensils there, it seems. They're gonna take us somewhere. Spice up your life. Spice up your life. Dancing Queen! Let's outside! Okay, so that was Spice of Your Life, and uh, I like this song, and what I think is cool about it is that, obviously, this is, like, you know, their lead single after Wannabe, like, the big, you know, we're here. Um, so, when you compare this to Wannabe, um, in a sense, I feel like it, com it pales in comparison to Wannabe, um, but if we're, if we're looking at... Um, and I don't mean that as a bad thing. I mean, you know, Wannabe is just so iconic. Like, how can you not? But what's cool about Spice Up Your Life is that it's a lot more subdued 
in uh, in its execution than it, than wannabe is. Like this isn't the biggest party club banger you could be playing at your party, but it but it hits you. And I feel like it would hit you even more live. I feel like it it could have used like a more um, What's the word I want to use? A more it could have used maybe a bigger production, but I think it was cool to not necessarily do that and maybe save the bigger production for the live stuff. I haven't seen um, really anything of the Spice Girls live. I do believe this is the song that they used to open up their tours. I think I read that, but um, don't quote me. But um, if, if this is the opener, then it makes sense because uh, it's perfect. They're here. They're gonna spice up your life. Um, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, Chicken to the left, slice up your life. Da, da, da. I think it would pop off better live, but as a studio recording, I'm not upset, and I, I liked it. Track number two, which is called Stop. Okay, this is something a little different. I love those vocals. Okay, um, wow, wow, oh my god, okay, so, um, what I loved about this track is that it felt absolutely ageless, it, I mean, if we're gonna age it, I guess, in a sense, it's, it reminded me of, like, a classic Motown song, um, I, whoa, whoa, and what I loved is that their, their vocals were such in the forefront of the mix. Like, I feel, does this, like, have, I feel, oh my goodness. I, <sighs> stop right now. Da, 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 da. Oh my god, that, uh, wow. Wow, okay. Um, and that charted at number 16. That's pretty good. I'm happy about that. That was really, really cute. Um, aw, I would, Wow. I just love that it felt timeless, it felt, and the vocals were so nice, whoever was doing those nice vocals there, beautiful. Um, uh, wow. Wow. That was, that, <laughs> incredible. So far we're getting a much more poppier album than I would argue the first one is. Again, we're only two tracks in, but, um, I really liked that. That was a lot of fun. Stop right now. I'm gonna be saying that all, oh my god, oh my god, I can't wait to listen to that again. Um, wow. Wow. Track number three, Too Much, which was the second single, and this is the highest charting on the Billboard Hot 100, so maybe this one I might know. Um, we'll see. Here we go. Okay, I think we're getting a ballad. I got wobble. It's just as tough I need 
okay. Too Much um, was really nice. It's not my favorite ballad I've heard by them so far. It's going to be hard to stop Mama and um, To Become One. Those were just iconic. But um, this one, what I found interesting, and this kind of goes hand in hand with this stop too, um, these felt like old classic um, Motown R&B songs. Like, they, I was like, are these covers? And they're not, apparently. Well, I, I say apparently. They're not. They're not. <laughs> but um, uh, they just, they, they felt so timeless. And even though they felt like they were referencing, you know, like, you know, older material um, in terms of, like, the sound, they did a good job of making me think that this was a song from back then. Um, and their vocals all sounded really nice on this one. Everyone so far is sounding really good. I think we got they got a little maybe more confident in their vocal abilities, all of them. Um, so I like that. Um, this one, it was reminding me very much of the lyrics. I would have to say that if I was to argue, like, um, or, like, what I think about the Spice Girls lyrics, from what I've heard, like, you know, the first album, this one, this one, their lyrics are odd. Like, odd and weird. Like, I, I, like they, <laughs> I don't know if it's, like, something that maybe translates better, because, you know, they're British, and maybe that's more British slang type. Well, they're not even really using slang, but you get the idea. Um... And then, like, some of the lyrics on this, I was like, wait, I'm, a little, I'm just a, a tad confused. Maybe more, a couple more listens, and I'll, I'll get it fully. But um, as it stands, I really liked it. Um, not my, again, not my favorite ballad, but I was happy to hear it. Track number four, which is called Saturday Night Divas, which I have a feeling is going to be a bop. So here we go. Let's hope, let's hope for it. it's a bop. Get down, get deeper and down. Get down, get deeper and down. Saturday night. Get down, deeper and down. Okay, so, um, Saturday Night Divas was not a bop, like I was hoping it to be, um, however, it was a groove, and it was very catchy, the, get down, get down, get deeper and down, um, very catchy, uh, there were, again, some fun vocals here, um, the chorus stuck out, I really was not really all that into the verses, um, they didn't really do a whole lot for me. This song, I never got tired of it. I, I should say that. I was never bored. I was having a nice time. But at 4 minutes and 26 seconds, uh, this could have been edited down. I could not think... I did, it didn't need to be this long. Um, a groove, but uh, uh, sometimes the groove has to end <laughs> a little sooner. Um, to be fair, though, I did not get bored of it. But um, it, it could have been cut down. Track number 5, Never Give Up on the Good Times. A title I really like, so here we go. Okay, is this going to be a bop? I have to say, this is a track that lives up to its title. Um, Never Give Up in the Good Times is exactly, like, this song is so beautifully fun, and it's so, it, it just represents, I just, it just represents the title so well. Um, it's fun, and it makes, it, it feels timeless, too. Wow. Good job on these girls and the songwriters. They really did something nice here. Um, 
the vocals again were re I feel like everyone sounds really nice here. Um, I did, lyrically again the core the lyric um, oh my god I can't think. <laughs> um, the verse lyrics are just a little like I was like wait what um, I heard someone was pregnant I think at the beginning and then I was like wait what uh, their lyrics to me are just really I don't know why they just confuse me but um I really enjoyed it and uh, I will definitely listen to someone again I'm gonna give it a, put a little heart next to it. Um, in fact, I kind of put a heart next to everything, but uh, that was really good, so uh, I liked it. It lived up to its title. Never give up on the good times! Track number six, Move Over. Okay, so um, I, I was like, I was listening to this and I was like, is this the song that I think, is this, I'm like, is this what I think it's about? Um, so uh, weirdly enough, this song was actually released as a promo single. Um, and uh, it looks as though, hang on, I want to read this real quick. All right, so it doesn't look like there's anything about it, but it, what I was getting out of this song was that the Spice Girls were telling the generation that's before them, uh, that, well, the, they're the next generation. Um, but I kind of liked it. It was like, get out, move, beat it. Um, which is kind of like, you know, how like I feel, whatever the generation, because there's millennial, there's Gen Z. I can't even keep up. I don't even know anymore. But um, like how every generation is like, beat it, bitch. Um, so that was fun. This was also used as it looks like for um, a Pepsi, uh, as a Pepsi uh, endorsement type deal, which I could definitely see. You know, I wonder if I remember that at all. Maybe I'll have to look up later and see if I recognize any of the commercials. But then again, this is 97, yes. I wouldn't remember anything <laughs> from that. But um, I liked it. Uh, it was fun. It was catchy. And it was it was a really s s quick song. Two minutes and 47 seconds. In and out. Loved it. All right, guys. So we are on track number seven. Now, if we were going with the standard edition... Uh, it would be uh, a track called Do It. However, on this channel, if you're, an, if you're a new Spice Girls fan and you're here on this channel, we talk about bonus tracks, we talk about Japanese, Chinese, UK, European, international editions. I make sure I get every track that was included on any version of the album. So in Japan, they received a bonus track. Um, and usually these are tacked on at the end, but they decided to put it here and then shift everything down. Um, but uh, Japan got a bonus track called Step To Me. Uh, and this is, the, so we're gonna listen to it. We'll see if I believe that it should not have been a bonus track. So this is, go, here we go. This is Step To Me, the Japanese bonus track. Why don't you step to me, let me take you for Okay, um, so at first I was not liking this because I thought it kind of sounded a little like move over and like having it right next to it was not helpful. And then I was kind of developing, you know, a like for it. Um, and then I was like, this kind of, there, there's like parts of the chorus that kind of sound like last time lover. And I was like, huh. And I'm like, and again, this like has a very sexual energy to it. Uh, which is kind of similar in a sense, like, naked. Um, so, I wish they hadn't put it, like, right where they put it. I wish they kind of tacked it on at the end as of right now, because, um, I mean, and this one also kind of reminded me of, like, an NSYNC or, like, a, yeah, like, a boy band song almost. Like, I don't know. I don't know. This one, I wasn't feeling it exactly. It felt like something I'd heard before. Um, didn't dislike it, but, um, I think it's placement hurt it a little bit for me, but, um, I liked, uh, whoever, what's, wh whoever rapped, I forget which one is who, but, uh, whoever rapped, I really liked that, but, um, I don't know, this one was just kind of mad at me. 
Track number eight, Do It. Okay. Come on! Okay, uh, I really like Do It. Again, this one has a very, um, like, a little bit of sexual energy to it, too. But I think the reason why I like this song a lot is because it reminded me a lot of the Madonna song from Bedtime Stories. Uh, um, I just had the name, Don't Stop, where it's like, Don't stop, keep moving, keep grooving. Um, it reminded me a lot of that song. So, um, as a compliment to that, I like them both. Um, this one was really cute. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I really liked it. I oh my god, I'll listen to this one again. It was really groovy. It was simple, but um, was executed well. Track number nine, denying. Ooh. Okay, this sounds like something off of their first album. Get yourself. Everything is being denied. Okay, what I liked about this song is that clearly they're talking about some dude, and either I can't tell if that he's necessarily good or bad, um, but whatever he is, he's denying who he truly is, or they, we should say, or they, who they truly are. Um, I like how they're like, everything you are denying, da 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 da, denying, every, like a list. Um, I mean, maybe it was maybe more like he, they were a bad person. I kind of maybe took it a little differently, but um, I like that one in a very, I think that's the denying, da 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 da, denying. I like that. That was really funny. It was a little campy, so I kind of like that, but um, I like that. Track number 10, Viva Forever. Very dark, haunting. I'm excited for this. Wait, hang on, I gotta turn this up. I think this is about to be epic.
you're kidding me. Guys, that was absolutely incredible. Oh my god, that was so beautiful. I loved the low notes. Um, as a baritone, as a baritone, I was like, Viva forever. It was nice, low register. I love that. Um, wow. I mean, this song is very simple. It was, I think, the easiest one for me to decipher. It was just like, I imagine, at least in my opinion, I imagine someone on the beach, um, you know, a nice little love affair, uh, and, you know, a, a perfect moment, a perfect summer, a perfect time in your life. Um, what is the what does Viva mean? You know what? I'm gonna just look that up because I I want I just want to be sure. You know, I don't know everything in the world. So let me open up good old Google Translate. So let's see, Viva, live forever. Oh, live forever. Um, that was beautiful, and I'm so glad I get to talk about this right now. So in doing these, uh, starting doing the last album, uh you know, when I did that video, I was reminded with doing some research that the Spice Girls had a musical and me being a graduate with a degree in musical theater, I kind of forgot about this and I think a lot of people have forgotten about this, but it was like back in 2011, 2012, the lady who created Mamma Mia decided it worked so well with ABBA. Why not make a musical out of the Spice Girls music? So I did a little research on the musical itself, you know, it was a huge flop and there isn't too much like available to look at, but there's like a bunch of promo material. And I guess the finale of act one is some medley, but it's also with the song Mama. And uh, like the girl is belting to the heavens. She's like, Mama, I love you. And I was just like, oh, oh, oh my God. Um, so if you saw Viva Forever, the musical, what'd you think? It sounds like it would be a lot of fun. I mean, it's a shame it got horrible reviews, but I'm kind of shocked too, because sometimes like musicals that get bad reviews do really well in London. Like uh, The Bodyguard did horrible here in America, but in London it was a hit. So um, I love me a good jukebox musical, and I'm kind of, this song, like it's being the namesake of it, I kind of would, I would be here for this. This was a very theater-esque song. I liked it, so um, I'm going to definitely listen to that one again. So far, I think it's my favorite thing I heard off of here. Track number 11, The Lady is a Vamp. Okay, a classic standard sounding track. This was a cool shaker, Molly Ziggy. Now she's a power girl in a 90s world, and she knows just what as far as we really cute. I like how the message of the song was kind of like, these women were kind of seen as, you know, like little scandalous, but they're remembered. They're cool. Um, and now we're the Spice Girls. We're a little, we're a little spicy, but, uh, we're fucking cool. Um, wow. That was, that was fun. Wow! I almost, like, I like how this is kind of a closer. I wish they almost kind of reworked it a little more, maybe made it an opener. I don't know. But I really like that. Um, you wouldn't see anyone nowadays going that hard. Well, that's not, I guess that's not hard as the thing. But actually, you know, doing a classical standard type sounding song. Um, I like that. That was pretty cool. Fun way to end the album, I have to say. All right, guys. So that was Spice World. And, um... Wow. Wow. Um, I think I'm in the position, I still kind of think I'm preferring the first album a little more, but you know what, maybe I've for a few repeat listens of this one, I'll, I'll get it too. Um, I, I think the best songs to me were Stop, um, Denying, Viva Forever was gorgeous, um, 
all of these are gorgeous. I would argue that I think the um, the two ones that aren't sticking as much out of my head are um, Move Over and Step To Me because they were a little similar to me in sound. So, like, I guess they kind of stuck together. And Do It did kind of sound... Oh, no, what was the one song that I th reminded me of something else? I forgot, but... um. I really like this one. What I think uh, worked with this one is it definitely felt like it was expanded from the first album. I felt like while they were still doing um, uh, R&B, we definitely got a lot more Latin influence things in here and more, you know, uh, Motown-y type stuff. Um, the one thing I will say, though, is that to me, I felt like this album felt a little more younger. Or I, I don't want to use the word juvenile because I think that would go too hard. Uh, for what I'm trying to say. But I felt like the first album seemed a little more mature in its, like, other tracks to me. Um, more reflective. I think just a little... To me, maybe, at least. This one, I did feel like uh, it reminded me a little more of, like, something a little more, you know, main, more mainstreamy. Although I did say I thought this was going in a more pop direction. I would argue that this one, if I was to say the other one, I would argue it's a more um, R&B flirt album. I would kind of say this one is like a bubblegum R&B type of album. It felt, it just felt, I don't know, I felt like we got a little more mature in the first album. Again, that that's me. Um, but I liked it. I can't wait to listen to it again. Uh, it was so cool. That Lady is a Vamp was actually a fun opening. I keep thinking about that. But I'm going to listen to this a couple more times. And uh, this is really cool. Um, I wonder, do the Spice Girls have any... Because I know we're going to watch Spice... We're going to watch the Spice World movie when we finish all the albums. Don't you worry. But do the Spice Girls, are any of their um, concerts filmed and like on a DVD? Uh, Spice Girls filmography, here we go. Do they have like a filmed concert? I mean, I'm sure there's probably one online, but um, according to Wikipedia, I'm not interviews, performances. Um, hmm. I don't know, I'm not really seeing like a, like a full live in concert thing, but I'll look up on YouTube. It's not that big of a deal. But, um, or oh, they have specials. So, I mean, well, what does that do for me? Uh, we'll see. Well, you never know. But I'll definitely take a look uh, at that. That was really cool. So what are your guys' thoughts on this album? Let me know. And again, as always, do not forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, and share. I gotta, I gotta spread them up. If you're a Spice Girls fan, if you like any of the other videos that I posted, please share them. It really helps me out in getting more people to see these, uh, these videos. And, uh, yeah, that's what I have to say. So again, like I said, do not forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Salvador J. Rocha, and uh, I will see you guys really, really soon. Uh, but just remember to spice up your life a little, and this is Viva Forever. Thank you guys. Li what was it? Live forever. Sempre Viva. Live forever like Death Becomes Friend. I'm getting off tangent, but I'll see you guys. <laughs> Bye.